If you're watching this, it means that your Mac is extremely slow and keeping your Mac optimized and running smoothly is crucial for productivity and longevity of a overly priced computer. So whether you are a professional content creator or a casual user or somewhere in between, I think you'll find this pretty useful. In this guide, we'll walk through a comprehensive Mac quick tune-up process that covers everything from system updates to cleaning up your device for optimal performance. Let's get started. So number one, we're just gonna get this out of the way. We have to make sure our Mac OS and apps are updated. Ensuring that your Mac OS and installed apps are up to date often includes updates that will have performance improvements and bug fixes. So to check and see if your Mac is up to date, you'll go to your settings and click on software update. I forgot to mention that no matter what version of Mac OS you're on, all of these things will work. So I'm in my settings right now and I do already see that a software update is available for me. I will say that you can find it in the general tab and then go to software update. This is where it will show you your potential and available update that you can do on your Mac. Number two is clearing your cache files. Now cache files are definitely more popular on PC to be clearing out, but cache files are still the same no matter what operating system you use. They're temporary data stored on your Mac for applications, system processes, and browsing activities. Now while cache files are useful for improving performance, they can accumulate over time and take up significant disk space. Clearing these cache files can free up space and sometimes resolve performance issues or application errors, but it is important to note that clearing cache files may temporarily slow down your system or applications as they rebuild the cache data. Of course, as you use those programs, that cache file will be restored basically immediately whenever you open up that program again, and then you won't run into that problem where it slows down a tiny bit. So you can find the cache files in library slash cache. Now I'm gonna have it written here on the screen. You can also copy it in the description. Now, where do you paste this? Here's how you get to it. You're going to hit command shift G, and then you're going to type in library slash cache first. We're going to hit enter on this guy. Here you can see I have a few things that we can delete. So we're going to move those to the trash. We're going to put in our password. Some things may come back and say that you can't delete those. Don't worry about those guys. Those are needed for your Mac to run currently. Now you're going to copy this file path. This will bring you to another uh, library of cache files that we can delete. So you're going to hit Command Shift G again, paste this file path in, hit enter, and it will open up a new cache folder where you can actually select all of these guys, which it will be a lot, especially if you are a content creator and you can actually delete this. Next, we are going to check our disk space. Making sure you have enough free disk space is crucial to keeping your Mac running properly. A good rule of thumb is to keep at least 10 to 15% of your total disk space free. To do this, go to your finder and then hit go, then go to computer. Here, what you're going to do is you're going to right click on your hard drive and click manage storage. I know that you can go through the settings, but I believe that some of the versions of Mac OS uh, don't work exactly like this. So the way that I just said should get you there no matter what version of Mac OS that you have. As you can see, I have 69.62 gigabytes of applications. You can actually click this I and delete the programs that you don't need that are hogging up space. Now, Apple has been notorious for not really showing you exactly what is taking up space on your phone or on your Mac. In this case, it's doing a very similar thing where it just says 1.4 terabytes is just system data. Now, if yours is like this and you don't know where the files actually are that are taking up all the space like mine is, I will address it at the end of the video using my favorite Mac tool. For right now, we're going to move on to the activity monitor where we can identify resource hungry apps. So if you head into your launch pad and go into utilities, you will find activity monitor. So we can open the activity monitor from our launch pad to actually see which apps are using the most resources. In this case, we can look at the CPU, what is actually taking up the most processing power, uh, what's taking up the most memory on our RAM. We can also look at the disk space, which programs are accessing the disk the most to either read or write on the disk. For all of these guys, yours probably won't look like mine does with like the poly recorder and the Windows server and all that stuff. This is actually just for me recording for this video itself, but this would be the place that you would like click on something and then end the process. That way your Mac is not running so heavily and not being hogged by so many resources. It's just a good place to check stuff starting out to make sure that, you know, there isn't one program on your computer that is completely destroying your Mac. The next thing that we are going to adjust are the startup items that show up on your Mac whenever you first log in. So how we're going to get there is by going into the settings, 
go to the search menu and look up login items. Some of you guys may have some items up here that will open at login. Currently, I don't have any in this category. However, stuff like this allow in the background. Some things, if you don't want to perform tasks in the background, you can actually turn them off. This could be useful for resource heavy things on your computer, or resource heavy uh, programs on your computer, especially if you're doing things like rendering out from After Effects or something like that. The next one on the list is one life-saving terminal command. Uh, I've used this plenty of times and I think you guys will probably end up using it, but this one could be difficult to follow for some users. I'm going to walk through the steps very simply to make sure no one gets lost. Uh, we're going to use a command to clear out some temporary files that are hogging up processing power on our RAM. So how we do this is we're actually going to go back into our launch pad and we're going to go into terminal. And this is inside of the other uh, window inside of the launch pad. So we're going to open up the terminal. We are going to enter the command sudo purge. When we click this, it will ask us for the password on our Mac. You'll put the password in and then it will clear off temporary files on your RAM. I don't know why other people don't utilize this feature. A lot of times, especially if you're hardcore rendering something in After Effects or Premiere Pro, or you've been recording something all day, there's a ton of temporary files on your RAM that you should clear off if you're not going to be utilizing those different features for a long time. Like if I only record once a month, all those files are still sitting on my RAM and they're not useful until that next month. So the next thing we are going to do is run the disk utility. Now we can find the disk utility inside of that other folder again within inside of the launch pad. Once we're in it, we're going to select our disk and then hit the first aid option. Then we're going to run it. Running the disk utility tool can repair the disk permissions and verify the integrity of the startup disk. This can resolve issues that may be slowing down your Mac. More than likely, your disk won't have any errors on it, but it is a good thing to check before trying to delete a ton of stuff off of it. The next thing we're going to do is reduce the visual effects on your Mac. If your Mac is an older Mac and it's starting to get a lot slower, this is something that you definitely can benefit from. Inside of the system settings, if you go into accessibility and then go to display, you can actually reduce the motion and then you can reduce the transparency. This is going to make your computer run a tiny bit faster by trying not to accomplish some of those like aesthetically pleasing things that are causing your computer to run a little bit harder. The last thing we are going to do is use CCleaner. Now CCleaner helps your Mac by removing unnecessary apps and startup processes and reclaims disk space from duplicate files and junk. So hit the link in the description and you'll be brought to the installer page of CCleaner. We're going to hit the free download button. Everything that we are going to be doing is just using the free plan from CCleaner. We do not need to purchase anything for this. I'm just gonna put this in my downloads folder. We'll double click on this and walk through the setup process. Once you have finished walking through the installation process, you are greeted by the CCleaner window. Uh, down at the bottom here, you do see that it says allow full disk access. I'm going to hit see how, and then open the privacy preferences. This allows it to look through the entire disk to find the most amount of junk files that it possibly can find. I'm gonna scroll down to full disk access, and then I didn't actually see CCleaner in the list that it gave. So what I did is I went down, hit the plus button, went into my applications, and then I selected CCleaner from there. It had me reopen the program, and now we're sitting back at the CCleaner window. To start out, I'm going to run a quick clean. Here you can see that I can delete 559 gigabytes worth of space. Now this includes the trash, the app cache, the log files, the cookies, a bunch of different stuff. So I'm going to hit clean on this guy. I'm going to have it close those programs. Once it finishes, you can actually go in and look at the different statistics of what you've actually deleted. If you're into that type of thing, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is go to clean clutter. Uh, now the clutter is very similar to the quick scan. However, the clutter actually looks in more places. So we're going to hit that guy. So after scanning, it found an additional 802 gigabytes of clutter. Now, something I do want to make sure that I make clear is that earlier when we were talking about this, you saw in the settings how it said like system data was 1.7 terabytes of space. You know, like that's, that's what it was. It was just there and it didn't tell you what it was. This helps you find those things that are taking up that space. I knew what those were. Those were pieces of footage that I've recorded from previous videos from my camera and I've just left on my computer. Now I know where those came from. However, inside of CCleaner, like let's say you don't know where they came from. It says that in the large files, you can actually scroll down and see all of those pieces of footage that I was talking about 
but I didn't know where they were. In this case, you'll actually see a lot of those files that are hogging up your space in the large file category. So you can select that if you want to delete them. The external drive junk, development junk, and trash are not showing up right now because I just deleted stuff from my trash and I just deleted all that stuff with the quick clean. If you're not sure what a file is, you can actually go in and look by clicking this magnifying glass and that will bring you to the actual location of that file to see, I mean, if you actually want to keep it or if you don't want to keep it.